This is an NBC News special report. Good day from New York, and let's go downtown lower Manhattan, where moments ago on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at an all-time high. There's the number. Remember, there's some fluctuation as the day draws on. Sue Herrera is on the floor of the exchange. Sue, this has been a long road since 07. It has certainly been a long road, Brian, but it was a very, very strong day today, and it is a day for the record books. The Dow Jones today hit its all-time record high. It hit its highest number ever during the course of the day, and then it closed at its highest number ever in the, the 116-year history of that index existing. The Dow, of course, is not a generic indicator of the health of the economy. It's not even a generic indicator of the health of the markets, broadly speaking. It is just a, a snapshot of 30 blue chip stocks. But it, but it is the thing that, honestly, we think of generically as the market. And it is a real indicator of how we're doing in some ways. And it is important enough to us that when it hits a record, NBC News breaks into local programming across the country to alert the nation in a special report that there has been a new record high. And if you are someone who sees national news, mostly in terms of national politics, it can be incongruous to see all the champagne corks popping on Wall Street today. Well, Washington spent the day today continuing to punch itself in the face with this unsolved sequester thing, which of course follows us punching ourselves in the face with the fiscal cliff thing, and which precedes us punching ourselves in the face with the government shutdown looming within the month. And then the next punch in the face is scheduled for after that one. That will be another debt ceiling fight. I mean, when it comes to politics about money, Washington has never been more even quixotically self-defeating and dumb than they are right now. And I say that as a term of art, dumb because we've just enacted a voluntary new fiscal policy that both sides call dumb and even disastrous. And it was voluntary, and we did it anyway. But Wall Street is psyched anyway. And apparently they have reason to be, if you read from their holy scripture, which of course is corporate profits. Corporate profits are and have been a very happy story during our current supposedly socialist administration. President Obama takes over, right, during the Great Recession, so this is the valley of corporate despair, but since then, corporate profits have just gone up and up and up. For a hot minute last summer, the financial press warned us that the fun was over, that record corporate profits would not last, but then after that, hey, look, they lasted, and then some. By the December report, we hit a new record, a new, new record, corporate profits at a new all-time high by the latest quarter for which we've got the data. America's corporation showed in that quarter the largest after-tax profit in the history of our nation, right? The problem with that is that that success is not necessarily redounding to the humans who make up our nation. Here's a really big issue for our country. Here's what corporate profits have been doing over time, for decades, basically over, over my lifetime. That's the red line there. And the blue line there is how working American humans have done at the same time. This is their slice of the pie. One is going up, and that is not helping the other one go up. There are, there are those who would argue that corporations are people, my friend, um, and, and corporations doing well helps people. And there are a certain number of people who benefit from corporations doing particularly awesome in the way they are right now. People who are, for example, directors of corporations or shareholders. They, are, of course, are happy to see their share prices and the value of the company go up. People who are executives at those corporations. For them, these really have been great times. But for everybody else, no. And so we are faced with really big, bold-faced, bright, easy-to-remember headlines about who we are as a country on days like this. But the headlines fit together in a way that feels off. On the one hand, we've got the Dow hitting an all-time record high today. Wall Street at an all-time record high. Corporate profits at an all-time record high. And that success is not helping the average, America, uh, the average American. All of that success is essentially being captured by corporations themselves and by the very richest people in the country who continue to do exceedingly well. And we sense that the fact that that might be working out for them and not for everybody else might be a big defining problem for us as a country. At least, at least we kind of sense it. If you poll on this matter, on this issue, you, you get something interesting. If you ask Americans 
how they think the, the wealth of this country ought to be distributed. If you ask Americans how they think we ought to divide everything up in this country, how wealth ought to be divided, you get an answer that looks like this. The bright yellow part on the left, those are the richest people in the country, so they do have the largest share. Orange is for the second richest, red is the middle. The gray block all the way on the right is the poorest group of Americans. This is how we think capitalism ought to divide wealth in our country. Yeah, the rich are going to be richer than everybody else. But this is how everybody else will share in the spoils of our American capitalist output. That's the American consensus, what it ought to be. And we know that this is not exactly true. If you ask Americans, well, how do you see life actually as being? Americans will tell you, well, the country doesn't look the way I want it to look. What I think the country looks like is this. We think that the rich, the yellow one on the left there, they have more than their share, but we think, it's, we think it's not exactly the way we want it to be, but this is how we imagine it to be. Now, if you want to look at what the chart actually is, if you want to look at how wealth actually is divided in the country, this is the truth. This is the truth of how unequal we are as a country. This is the way that wealth is divided. Again, the top 20% there is on the yellow. You can't even see the little gray bar it's been squeezed off the right. The richest folks in bright yellow in real life take up way more than half the chart because they've got way more than half the money. The blue middle is shoved way off to the side, and the poorest folks, the gray block, they almost do not register. This is not how we think it should be or how we imagine it to be. This is how it is. And so on this day, when this is true, right? When we just hit the all-time record high in the Dow, why is this huge and worsening inequality problem that we've got happening? Is this happening because we did something wrong as a country? Could we fix this problem if we wanted to? 